Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, I believe we made our custom projectiles here that slow down the enemy. And what I was planning on doing this week was actually making more projectiles. I mean, first off, you can see our blue towers here are using the ice tower projectile, which is temporary and not what they should be doing. So I spent some time working on the project on my own and trying to figure out the best way to kind of do custom projectile types, because we haven't really done that yet. Uh, we have one so far, which is the ice ball. So all of our towers are using that one projectile. And so I started experimenting and I started making different towers and different uh, projectiles that the towers shoot. One thing I was working on was making a burn tower. So kind of contrary to the ice tower, this would shoot like a fireball and then the enemy would slowly burn over time and take damage over time. And one thing I realized when working on that is that it's really hard to get information about our enemy's health right now. There's not a lot we can tell about when it's going to die and how uh, close it is to dying or how healthy it is. I guess there's only so many ways we can reword that same sentence over and over. So what we're going to do this week is actually make a health bar above our enemy. And this is going to be a quick episode, I imagine. I'm usually not great at those predictions, but I can't imagine this taking too long to do. So first things first, I have three new textures, health background, health border, and health foreground. And so those are all three available in the video description right now. Just go ahead and pause the video and download those three and put them in your project instead of our resources folder. These three textures are really, really basic. So that's why I'm kind of just making them available to uh, the video description there and not just on Patreon. They're just literally uh, health background is just a gray box. Health foreground is a green box and health border is a black one pixel wide border. And so go ahead and download those, put them in your resources folder, and we're going to make variables in our enemy class to hold these three objects. So right after our texture, we're gonna make three new textures. And they're gonna be aptly named health background, health foreground, and health border. And then right after our first texture here, here it is. We can set these new ones, this.texture equals quick load. And make sure you have the textures named appropriately. I know if you download them from Imager, which is where I'm uploading these, then you might get like a random set of characters for the name. Just go ahead and rename those files and then make sure you hit refresh, right click resources and hit refresh to be able to see them in there. And quick load the uh, correct texture name. So for me, that is first off, it's not this.texture. It's this dot health background equals quick load health background foreground and border. Okay, so once you have all three of these taken care of, we're just going to make some updates to our draw method. So we're doing all of these changes just in our enemy class. Nothing else is changing. Kind of a quick episode. I'm actually recording this on my birthday, so I'm going to be busy the next few days with work as well as uh, going on a quick vacation for the weekend. So in our draw method here, we're going to do uh, draw quad text. That's normal, just our texture. And after that, we're going to draw three more quads. Draw quad text. Mm, we do the background first. Health background, X, Y, width, and height. Now we want to adjust this a little bit and it's going to take some time to kind of, or not time, but it's going to take a couple test sessions to figure out exactly where we want it. But first let's go ahead and put in our foreground. X, Y, width, and height. And our border. So as of right now, this should not look great, but let's go ahead and try it and just see if it's in the game at all. There it is. <laughs> Looks good. We should actually just keep it like that. I think our enemy will slowly get un... Oh no, it's not going down because the tech... Oh, of course it's not going down. Silly. You know what we need to do? We actually need to make another variable here. So right now we're just tracking health, and that is just one. First off, it should be a float. So let's get rid of it from the integer list and add it to the float list health. And while we're here, we're also going to add start health. 
and where we set health equal to health right here, we can also set this dot start health equal to health. And because we changed it from an int to a float, we also need to change it down here in the getter. Just change that from int to float. And then probably as well in our wave, yep, in our wave class over here. Update it from, hmm, enemy list, enemy. Oh, it's actually in our enemy constructor. Change it from an integer to a float right here. Okay, we should be good now. So we added another variable named health uh, or total health. Where is it? Start health. So, so far we've only tracked one variable for our HP and that's just health. So we start with a certain amount, say 50, and then as that goes down, we don't really do anything with it, but we check if eventually it gets below zero. And if it gets below zero, we call this great die method. Here it is, alive equals false. Pretty much the best method in our entire game. Just perfect, does its purpose perfectly. And so all we're doing is checking, actually here it is right here in our damage, we're saying if our health is less than or equal to zero, then we should die, and then we are no longer alive. But the thing is, we actually wanna check what our current health is, which is just health, versus what we started as to make a health bar. So that's why we have this start health variable now. Because in order to kind of show a health bar, we need to know how far down from what we started we are right now. So if we have 50 starting health and we have 25 left, we wanna draw the health bar half full. So we have the uh, start health and health both equal to health when we first start our enemy. And now let's go down to our draw method once again. And here are these draw calls here. We're gonna make a new float named health percentage. And it's just equal to our health divided by our start health. And that's why we needed floats, by the way. If you try to divide integers like that, where this one is smaller than this one, you'll get pretty much zero or one. Uh, it ends up like rounding to the nearest integer. So let's go ahead and update these draw calls real quick. First off, we don't want our health bar to cover our entire enemy. That's ridiculous. We want it to be above our enemy first off. So for our background, let's uh, keep the X. I think that's okay. Maybe move it a little bit to the left, but X and then Y, we can do our enemy's position, which is our Y minus, and this is some tinkering and it might look different on your screen and you know, feel free to kind of stray from the values I'm using here. I'm just gonna use what looks best for me. So we'll say Y minus 16 to start off. And for height, let's just make it eight, eight, let's see. Let's see how this looks here. And I'm also gonna change it right here, Y minus 16 and a height of eight. And also the border, Y minus 16 and a height of eight. So let's see how this looks. Wow, so <laughs> you're not gonna believe me, but this looks pretty good and I swear I didn't memorize those values. So it's not actually going down though, you'll notice. You'll see the health bar is still full even though we're hitting our enemies. And that's because we're not making use of our health percentage value that we just made. And that's gonna go in our foreground. So our background is just a gray box, which we actually haven't seen yet in the game because it's been covered by our foreground. Our foreground is that green box, which is pretty much our health bar, and our border is that little black border around it. So for foreground, we're gonna change the width, because right now it's spanning the entire width of our enemy, which I believe is 64. So instead, let's go ahead and make that, hmm. We'll make it based on our tile size, multiplied by our health, Percentage, I may be off a of place value here. This might be embarrassing, but I'm just gonna go ahead and run this and see what's going on here. What happens when we shoot? Hey, got it right, first try. So you can see now when we hit our enemies, the health bar kind of shrinks down and we can see as it gets diminished there to zero. When it hits zero, it completely disappears. And that is an easy way to make health bars. And so the reason I did this again is because I was working on different kinds of tower types. We have the slow tower for ice ball, and I was making a fire tower, maybe a poison tower, something that does damage over time. And it's really, really hard to do when you can't see how much health your enemies have. It's really hard to find out if they're actually lowering health. I was like printing stuff to the console, but this is way cleaner. And this is a pretty successful short episode, I think. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week 
an indie programmer.